Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. Let me grab some notes here. I don't miss nothing. How you guys doing? Good, 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 good. First off, coach, parents, staff, thanks a lot for inviting me back up and my beautiful family. Uh, it's always a, a great opportunity. I had an opportunity to come here to speak at the uh, Iowa Football Networking then uh, I think a year, uh, about a couple years ago. So I got an opportunity to meet some of you guys. And anytime I get an opportunity to speak, like my wife always tells me, I'm doing when someone asks you to speak, take the time to really uh, focus in and, and make sure you um, impact the people who are listening to you. Um, I just want to take some time to introduce my wife, my lovely wife, Shabli. Uh, she's, she's been great. She's been the person behind me, pushing me all these years. Shabli and I met in high school. Um, and then we had my daughter, Omari, while, while I was coming here my freshman year. So Omari's 15. Uh, Shabli, she does a great job. She works with um, uh, drug and rehabilitation uh, patients at her, her job, but she also is uh, on track to get a master's degree where she's a big graduate. She's, she's doing a great job. Amari's 15. She's a sophomore in high school, a great student, very smart in Cambridge program. She also plays catcher on her softball team. She does a great job. AJ, seven years old, loves football, great student, great kid, and we just try to you know, work together as a, as a family and a team and, and be really close to, uh, to really give our kids what they need to be successful in life. Um, I'm going to share a story, okay, um, about my family and I and really about Chablis, okay, because a lot of times one of the things I like doing, we like to travel. I was afforded a, a great opportunity to to live a good life because of football and, and, and coming to University of Iowa and getting into the college degree that we have the opportunity to travel and, and go some places. Um, about 2009, 2010, one of my teammates, Brandon Johnson, was getting married uh, in Jamaica. So we went to this Jamaican wedding, uh, this wedding that was in Jamaica. It was in Negril, Jamaica, very, very nice place uh, outside of Montego Bay. And the hotel that we were staying at, the resort, is called the Tenzin Pen. Okay? So the Tenzin Pen is named after two dogs, uh, two Rhodesian Ridgebacks. So we come into the uh, resort. And we check in, and there's these two dogs, big old dogs. They're probably about, they had uh, probably about right here, real big dogs. And they're just laying around, right? They're just laying around, you know, look, being lazy, whatever the case may be. And we check in. Now, my wife, you know my wife, she is scared of dogs. As long as maybe a little Yorkie, she feel like she can fight and beat up the little Yorkie, so she's not going to be as afraid. Of, but these dogs, she's terrified of. So we go in to grab something to eat, and that's what you do in Jamaica, right? You go there for the people, the vibe, but also you go there to eat, right? You know, eat the oxtail and the, you know, the saltfish and dumpling and all that kind of stuff. Now, as we go, these dogs are just laid out, you know, around the area that we're eating, and they're not bothering any, anyone. But my, for whatever reason, my wife is is scared of dogs, so she asks the guy nice hey can you remove these dogs so the, the dogs get up tens and pen get out of here they get up slowly and they walking away and they just go okay then you see them laying out somewhere else and as the people pass by some you know a lot of people like dogs they pet them and that kind of stuff furthermore let me just move it on we went to the reception okay we went to the reception and uh, the reception was late, about 10 o'clock at night. That's where you have the festivities and the party for the wedding, that kind of stuff. And as me and my wife go back to the resort, about 1.30, 2 a.m. or so, we walking back, just having a good time. And all of a sudden, these two dogs come around the corner, just ripping right at us, right? Like they're just getting ready to attack us. And my wife yells, Somebody help us, right? Now, here I am. I'm not moving, right? Because for one, I get my wife right there. I can't look like, you know, I'm trying to run away from the dog, right? So I got that macho thing going. And then for two, it's pitch black. So in my mind, we just going to have to do whatever. Whatever happens, we, it's going to have to go down right now, OK? <laughs> so the dogs came running around the corner. You could hear them scratching and hauling and breathing. And as soon as they got to us, they just stopped and just turned around and went back, right? For whatever reason, that's what they did, okay? But this is what that did to me, okay? Now, I knew my wife loved and cared about me, but listen to what she said. She said, somebody help us, okay? 
So now as you get married and you get some of you guys maybe married, I'm not, but you're in relationships or will be into a relationship and you know that you have a special bond with that individual and you have a great relationship. And because you're into this marriage, you're supposed to love each other and, and those types of things. But within the relationship, okay, within the relationship, you get confirmations about the individual. And for me, that was another confirmation. Okay, she really care about me because she could have said, somebody help me, <laughs> but she said, somebody help us, okay? So what that told me was the power of commitment. When you commit to someone, is not about you anymore, it's about us, it's about the relationship, it's about the bond, it's about the union, it's about us, okay? Um, and what that does, how is that gonna correlate to, to you guys, okay? Most of everyone in here, I believe, uh, I'm not sure the walk-on process, but I know most everyone signs the letter of intent, right, to come to university. So what happens on National Signing Day is, you know, school send a fax, the letter of intent, and you sign your name on that line. But what is that, okay? For me and my wife, when we got married, we signed a marriage certificate. For when you come here in the University of Iowa, you sign the letter of intent. That is the same thing. But what does that mean when you sign that letter of intent? When you sign that letter of intent, it's saying, I'm committed, okay? I'm committed to go to University of Iowa, okay, to further my academics, and play football, okay? That's what that's saying. So, so what does that look like, okay? So let's just take a look at from the university standpoint, okay? I sign my name to un go to University of Iowa. So I go to University of Iowa. They, I have to commit to the academic standard that's at the University of Iowa, okay? I have whatever requirements they have, whether it's 2.0 for some degrees, a 2.5 or 3.0, there's certain degrees or programs that are university I already have certain requirements and standard. That's what I'm committing to. I'm committing to govern myself accordingly amongst the student, the general student population, okay? Now, let's just take that a step further. I'm also committing to what? To play football at the University of Iowa. And I think during the recruiting process, a lot of people miss that. When I sign my name to come to University of Iowa, okay, I'm committing to come to a program that's already in place, a system that's already in place. So I have to choose to be part of that system. I have to find out for one, what is that system? And how does that system, how would that system work for me? So we know that coming to university, okay, especially at a university like Iowa, where you have some universities, let's just be honest, talent trumps a lot of things. Tra talent trumps character. Talent trumps integrity, but at University of Iowa, because you signed to come to University of Iowa, that program is not installed here. The structure that's installed here is you're gonna do things right off the field before you even get an opportunity to do things right on the field. What does that mean? Going to class on time, right? Getting your study hours, okay? Um, in the weight room, give it 100% in the weight room. Okay? Because what it comes down to is trust. And they're building character. Without, without character, without trust, and if you're missing classes and you're not doing what you're supposed to do, how can they trust you to, be on, to, to, to take care of business on the field? How can they trust you with 30, 40 carries a game? How can they trust you if they call cover two that you need to be down in the middle of the field? How can they trust you that if they run a wheel route, okay, backside, okay, that, that wheel should be back there? Or whoever has the curl of flat takes the wheel. Okay, that's what it's about. Now, what else are you committing to? Coach Ferris um, spoke about it. When I came here on my visit, we had a lot of great guys. Greenway, I think Brad Banks, CJ, I think Brian used on a visit as well, Brian Ferris. Um, so I am committing to, to, to the team. I'm committing to my teammates. I'm committing to the players that, in the, in, that are in the locker room. Because without that, okay, then it limits me as an individual. But when you have something that's bigger than yourself, it pushes you, okay, beyond that, beyond your, just your natural uh, levels. So when you run in those 24, 55s and you get to 18 and your legs start shaking and all that kind of stuff, you start looking at the guys around you that you committed to, okay? You start looking at the, the prepare to be great, okay? 
that's what you're committing to. You're committing to the university. You're committing to these, the coaches. You're committing to each other. Now, your level of commitment dictates your success. Okay? How committed you are to the university, okay, to the Iowa football program, and to each other will dictate your success. And those things will never change as long as you're done with football. Football is a small part of what we're here for. Okay, what we have to do is, what, what they're doing is building men, okay, whole men, character, integrity, people that do things the right way. Now, let's talk, go back to talk about the, these dogs. So I was very fascinated because when I left the, uh, the, the, the resort, I started doing some research on these dogs. So the Rhodesian Ridgebacks were used in Africa. They're a breed, crossbreed from Africa, and they was used to hunt lions, right? So hold on, these guys got us in the resort, laying these dogs around that used to hunt lions, okay? So what fascinated me about these dogs is that during the day, I promise you, they're just laying around, just doing nothing, just looking like lazy dogs. But during the night, those dogs came alive. They're hunting dogs, they're security dogs. And what they were put in the, um, the resort for is to protect the, uh, the us, to protect us from people from the outside that are not supposed to be there. Now, these dogs are not just laying around. What these dogs are doing, these dogs are smelling the people who are moving amongst the uh, inside of the resort. So if you're not supposed to be inside of that resort, you're in trouble. Because they will know because your scent, uh, your sense of fear, uh, and those types of things. And I don't know what happened if somebody come over that wall that don't supposed to be in there, but I, don't, I wouldn't want to be there. Okay, so what these dogs do is, what fascinated me is that they was able to click a switch and turn it on. Okay, they're able to click a switch and turn it on and they, they, they show up and they come alive at a specific time and for a specific purpose. Their purpose are to be security dogs, right? How, what, what is that saying for, for, for us? What is that saying for you guys? There comes a time where you have to have the mentality of on the field, off the field, in the weight room, outside of the weight room. Once you get into that weight room, okay, something has to happen. When you turn, get, go, go on to the football field tomorrow, okay, Kinnick, uh, uh, in, in Kinnick Stadium, something has to happen. Okay, you cannot, if you're the same person off the field that you are on the field, that's, that's not gonna work, okay? That's not gonna work, either way. If you're crazy off the field and crazy on the field, that's not going to work, okay? But if you click a switch when it's time to get on the field and something comes into you, okay, and, and, and a fire is lit, okay, that's the way it's supposed to be. Because you're turning it on, you're coming alive at a specific time, okay, and for a specific purpose. And that's why I was so fascinated by these Rhodesian Ridgebacks because they sort of reminded me a little bit about my approach to the game. Outside of the, outside, off the field, you know, I could be calm, cool, collective. I'm gonna take care of my business. I understand there's a time and a place for everything. But when it's time to put on those pads, okay, when you go into a locker room and you see your, your, your name in the, in the back of your jersey and you see that, that tiger hawk in that helmet, something has to happen. And when you come out of that tunnel and you're holding hands and you, you hear the crowd going crazy, something has to happen, okay? So you gotta turn that switch on and off. Um, for every end, there's a beginning, okay? For every end, there's a beginning. I know this is sort of the last game of the year. I know we have the bowl game. But for every end, there's a beginning. So what does that mean? Depending on if you're a senior, that means something different, right? If this may be your last game, you're getting ready for the combine, the senior bowl, whatever the case may be, or you're just getting ready to graduation to go, go into the, the world and get you a nice job and go out and create your family and kill it in corporate America. Okay. Or it's a, is, it a, is, is it a young guy that's here, that's on special teams, that want to go down and make a big play that to set the momentum and the tone for next season? Okay. So everyone has something to play for. Uh, and I want to I wanna give uh, a lot of congratulations to the seniors. Okay. How, who, who are the seniors for the mark? Can you guys just raise your hand? Okay, cool, cool. So for, for one, congratulations. Okay. Going and, and, and going through an entire program at University of Iowa is not easy. And I tell my wife this all the time. 
if you can, I tell her, babe, if you can go through the University of Iowa football program and go to school and be a student athlete, there's nothing in life you can't accomplish. Because it's not easy, right? It's not easy every single day getting up, going into the weight room, you know, and, and, and getting your car, looking at the, those heavy squats. You know your body's sore, but you got heavy squats, and it has to, it has to get done, right? Um, it's not easy. Wednesday, 6 a.m., and it's, it's freezing outside, and you ain't got no school or no car, and you got to walk over for a 6 a.m. workout. That's not easy. And you got to get ready for class after the workout, okay? I had an opportunity to, uh, so I want to congratulate the seniors for that, okay? You guys are earned. The, the opportunity to walk out on the field tomorrow, you cherish it, uh, it's a great moment. I remember my senior year. I don't remember too much about my, the bowl game my senior year. I remember the last game when we played in Minnesota, when my family was out there running, running to them and, and seeing other people's families, and, and that's, that's what it's about, okay? I had opportunity to speak to um, uh, the linebackers, and I also spoke with the uh, the, uh, the defensive backs. And one of the things I wanted to share with them was how the game of football in life, it comes a time that you just got to take things personal, right? And what does that mean? As a, as a player, and I can speak from, for myself, when I look at film and I see Michigan, okay, at the time Michigan ran the ball a lot. I saw that they was putting in about 20 to 25 lead plays on, on script uh, a game, okay? So I took that kind of personal. I didn't run it from different ways, whether tight end is off or the fullbacks in the backfield, but they run it, they love the lead play. So in my mind, they sit in, they sit in at Michigan, they watching 52 at Mike, and they're saying, this, I'm gonna run this lead play to this guy turn, turn, start turning these leads down. Right, so I gotta take that personal, and what that do is it forces me, okay, to prepare myself for what I'm getting ready to go into. I used, another thing I used to take personally, as a, line, and, and as a linebacker, these offensive linemen, no disrespect, Brian Ferris and the crew, okay, these, these offensive linemen will pull around the corner, what do you call it, UC, UG, or UT, or whatever, they'll pull around the corner, the, the, the here, they're gonna pull around the corner and turn up and block me, okay? Now, come on, that, if, you, if you're a linebacker, you can't take that personal that this guy is going to draw a play up, that the line, linemen are going to pull around the corner sideways and then turn up to try to block me? No, I'm going to take that personal and I'm going to go downhill and I'm going to attack him and I'm going to make sure I catch that lineman before he get his shoulder squared and to send a message to the offensive coordinator that that play, you got to take that play out of the book. You gotta take that, you gotta go to another play, because that's not gonna happen. Even if, okay, even if I'm not even worrying about the ball, but for the first time they run that play, I have to send a strong message the first time to let them know that today, that play, you might as well put an X on that play. Okay? If I'm a corner, cornerback, okay, and they like doing go routes and stuff, we gotta shut that down right now to let them know that is not gonna happen. Okay? Another thing that I spoke to uh, uh, those two groups about is Having, a, having no choice in the situation. We talk about accountability, we talk about a commitment to the team, the university, and each other. You have to have a commitment also to the, the scheme, the defensive scheme, okay? I talk, my daughter plays catcher, and I tell her this. When that ball is on the ground, when that pitcher, for one, you're there to make the pitcher look good. When that pitch, when that pitch winds up, when that pitcher pitches that ball, the minute that ball hit the dirt, you have to drop and block. It's not a choice to drop and block, okay? That's what you gotta do. That's the way, that's the way it has to be played, okay? You don't, you don't get tired and say, I'm, the ball hit the ground, I'm just gonna put my hand in and try to, try to time its bounce. No, no, no. Ball on the ground, drop and block, okay? And that's how it has to be when you're playing football, okay? Gotta cut the back side, cut the back side. There's not a choice, there's no choice in the matter. That's the way that place is designed to do, to, to run, so that has to be done. Okay, if I'm a safety and I'm supposed to be reading two to one, okay, I have to read two to one every single time. It's not, a, it's not my choice, right? That's the way I, I committed to the University of Iowa, Iowa football program, I committed to the teammates, I commit to the type of defense we're gonna play, okay? Read two to one, I read two to one, trim eyes, I read two to one, okay? If, um, 
if I talk to the linebackers, is if, if, if coach want me to hit that lead in the, back, in the backfield on this side of the ball, I don't have a choice in that matter. I have to go and get that done, okay? I have to go and get that done. Um, so take the choice out of it. And what, what I would say is what helped us, and I was really blessed to come into the University of Iowa at a great time. Uh, the, uh, the coaches did a great job recruiting, putting a lot of great guys around us. Um, guys like Chad Greenway, Bob Sanders, uh, Kelvin Bell, Kevin Worthy, uh, uh, I could go on, okay? I was, I was blessed to be around, I was blessed to be part of the uh, University of Iowa at a great time. But what, what brought me here, okay? There's a few things, okay? There's a few things. For one, I'm not a glitz and glamour guy, okay? I took my first trip to University of Auburn at the time, and I, it was a lot of, it was a big spectacle. I'm not a, a glitz and glamour guy. Two, when I came into the weight room, I saw Bob Sanders for the first time. This guy was this short with no neck, right? So I'm like, okay, well, if that guy, if that guy's gonna be on the defense and they show me some highlights and he's a young freshman guy, then I have some, I, I have, a, I, I, you know, then they could work out for me. Um, but two, when I sat and I knew that my, I was 195 pounds coming from, my, coming from Fort Lauderdale, playing in the Big Ten, I think when I got to, when I got to campus, I was maybe 200, 205. So for me to be successful, I knew I had to have a great, the school that I had had to have a great strength and conditioning program. I'm 195 pounds trying to play, in, and, and this is a time when the Big Ten was the Big Ten. This, you know, everybody's grounded pound, 280 pound fullbacks. So I knew that my commitment to University of Iowa, one of the main reasons was because of Coach Dolan's strength and conditioning program. And it, it helped a lot of individuals because they have a developmental mental program that gets guys better. Uh, I had the opportunity to meet with Coach Ferris, and I was sold on his vision. Norm Parker, I was sold on his vision and what, what, this, what this program was about. And that's what brought me here. Okay, so and obviously outside of that, you guys are blessed to be in a community, man, that loves sports. And I'll say this, okay, what's happening in the university when you're at school here, uh, as far as being together um, and part of a football team, will never be able to duplicate that again. Okay, you'll never be able to, do, that's why so many guys um, get into uh, CrossFit, um, a lot of guys going to coaching because it's that camaraderie, right? That's what really what guys are chasing is that, that team, that, to, that togetherness. And I, I'm proud to say the best four and a half years of my life has been at the University of Iowa, okay? Has been at, been at the University of Iowa. Um, so I tell you guys, enjoy it, man. Especially seniors, this is, your, this is your day, enjoy it. Take this stuff personal. Nebraska coming in, number 15 to 16, whatever they are, thinking that, okay, they, they still, regardless of the Michigan game or the Illinois game, they still looking at the Penn State game, okay? So you have to take that personal when you go out in that field tomorrow. These guys thinking they come in here at our home, okay, at our home on Friday, and that they gonna just walk out of here with a W. Well, we have to take that personal. And what you guys do today, Okay, from here on up is going to matter. Get to the hotel, the wave case and be, study your notes, study the game plan, and get ready to go. And when you run out of that tunnel, okay, just remember, when you sign on that line to, to, for a commitment to the University of Iowa, okay, to come to school here, be part of this program, okay, and you're committed to the guys that are running out that tunnel with you. Thank you very much. <laughs> it's the best way to read. Unbelievable. Unbelievable job. He'll break you down. Bring it in. And Bill, you got it. Well, Hawks on three? Went, went on three. Went on three. Went on three. One, two, three. Hey. Appreciate it, Coach. Thank you. Uh, thank you.